everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hi. I'm Mike Delicio. My mic is on. <laughs> Welcome to the final top ten list, I think. Ever. Of this year. Whoa, wait a minute now. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. I didn't I, I didn't say it in like It was uh, no, it was very um a doomsayer. Right. You should have put that on a plaque. What was the name of the okay. uh, Undertaker's Paul Bearer. Paul Bearer. I should be like <laughs> swinging a little thing. Who was the last top ten of the year? <laughs> All right. This is our top ten games of the year. There's not much more to say, uh, but I have a caveat. Um, uh, well, I said one at the very beginning, but just a reminder in case you're just tuning in. Yes. We did not play every game that came out this year. No. Mm, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I will speak for myself. I played, what's it? 280, 290, something around there. Different. You're games. a lazy bum. <laughs> I think I played 712 games this year. <laughs> <laughs> and you? I played 12. <laughs> Two of them are trash. <laughs> Welcome to my top 10 of the year. But we can't play everything. We know that. But I will say this. We go out of our way to play games we're interested in. Yes, yes And because absolutely. of that, you if you just watched, we just did our top 10s of 2022. Revisit it, mm -hmm. and at least for me, there was very little change. I think I only had two games. I had a come couple that shifted up or shifted down. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean they, they were great games. So we try to play as many, but there might be some, and you know what? We'll do revisit it again next year. Indeed. But for now, these are our favorite. Secondly, there's a game I really, really like, a lot, and I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Obama video game or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. That came out, and I love that game. But it's not out in English, so I didn't put it on my list. Okay, well, so that's good. I did not put, and I don't think, I'm, I'm, this isn't a spoiler because I have a reason. I did not put Zuvatis in consideration this year. Good, because it's a reprint. Because it's a reprint. Now, it's a, some significant changes, but I still decided for the sake of, you know, just trying to be as, you know, I don't know, whatever as possible, it's not in consideration. It would be in my top ten of the year if I had allowed it to be in consideration. I thought that was like a very different game from the They've original. They've added two significant rules. Oh, okay. It's a tough call. It would be yeah, it was really cusp. close. I would, I would have given them grief because yeah. it's, Mike it's our job. <laughs> correct. <laughs> right. We're but, doing uh, what we correct. can. Yeah, just know okay. it would be on there if, it was, if I counted it as eligible. Other than that, let's get started. I have no idea what's on people's list. Here we go. My number 10. Think there'll be any crossover? There will be crossover. There will be crossover, not with my number 10. I can There's... guarantee you that, because I know you two haven't played it. How do you know these things? You, you don't know. He's played 700 games. Back off. 712, thank you. My number 10 was one of those 12. That's such a bad joke. Right? No, it's not even a joke. It's look, a let's, joke. let's just sit there in awkward silence for a while, right? My number oh, 10 uh -huh. is part of what I like to call... The trick tricking, trick tricking <laughs> renaissance. The, the trick, 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 the trick tricking, renaissance. Trekking across history renaissance. Trick taking renaissance. This is my favorite trick taking game of the year. Oh, it is called boy. King's Trick Takers. So this is a game that was. Uh, it, it's part of a family. You know why we didn't play it? Because you stole this from our studio. Yeah, that was definitely here. You and told I, me specifically, I Mike, remember wanting to play this, and I right. was like, you know what I should do? I got up from my desk, and I went back there, and I thought, I'm going to play that King's Trick Takers game. <laughs> no, no. Oh, you got got. Uh, so, yes, I took this game for the purposes of a review, and, and uh, it's in my top ten of the year. This is a fantastic trick-taking game. You can see here we played it at the retreat. Uh, I played it a number of times there and taught it. And this one is not for beginners to trick-taking games, okay? Uh, because it has some really interesting things going on. The main idea is that everybody's going to be drafting suit cards, basically king, queen, and jack, that have particular power. So okay. you have those throughout the game. But then in the, other th in, in the three rounds, you're also drafting characters that have special power. So you draft three of these characters. Two of them you're going to keep face up for their power. Mm -hmm. The third one you flip face down and it, it is the, your bid for that round. How many tricks you're gonna win. Okay. And then these characters do some really interesting things and you can't keep those characters for the next round unless someone else played the ca same character and you can take it from them. But it's just such a solid, solid Oof. game that does not feel like any other trick-taking game I've played. 
And um, if it, it, there's a learning curve, but once you learn those characters, it is so rewarding. Absolutely okay. stellar production too, beautiful cards. I love the art. Um, and so King's Trick Taking uh, had a, it, it did have a Kickstarter here in the States, so it is available oh. somewhat. Um, oh, and okay. you can get it from Japan now too, but um, I would not be surprised to see this get picked up by somebody here in North America. There's my number 10, King's Trick Takers, or Trick Taking Game, whatever it is. That also means that there are no more trick taking games on your list. That is correct. Ooh. The <gasps> highest trick taking game on Mike's list only clocked in barely, I should say. Trick said. taking renaissance. It's a trick taking blip. My 11 through 46 are all trick takers. <laughs> there it is. Now we're talking. I did a top 10 trick taking oh, list man. of 2023 earlier. You did great. All right. My <laughs> number 10. Is Zuvadas. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. I haven't played it. Um, no, my number 10 is a fantastic card game, trading card game style, all in one box. And, oh boy, I love that stuff. You know, <laughs> cards with powers, and it's all right there. There's no need to expand it, no need to go get any more of it. This is the veil of eternity. Ooh. I thought this would make your top ten. Cause yeah, it's when he, just missed mine. When it was on the surprises, you didn't say anything. I, I was thought. quiet like a peacock. That's right. <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> the Veil of Eternity is a wonderful card drafting, card playing, combo rific card game in which you can use this display of cards that gets flopped out there for a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. You might go for one because you want the coins that position gives you. Yes. Forget the card, I'm just going to throw the card away. Or you might want to take that card into your hand and then deploy it in front of you. All these different, you know, play instantly and it gives you some ability, stay in effect ability. It has this really interesting idea of your display of cards can only have as many cards in it as the round we're currently in. Right. So at the end of the first round, you can only have one card. At the end of the fourth round, you can only have four cards. So you have to be careful. Sometimes you play something out because you can and it's quite costly to create a space in your display. It is. You have to pay just to like dismiss that thing. I really like this one. It looks fantastic. Again, it feels like a trading card game in a box. Um, I love that stuff. I just don't like most of the baggage that that kind of came, game comes with, and this has none of that baggage. I really like it. The Veil of Eternity, wonderful release, my number 10. I usually don't like this, this stuff, that's why it was on my list. I also like the economy in it, you can never have more than four coins, really yeah, clever. Yeah, and you can make chains, right, all right. these like little rules that are yeah. small but elegant, yeah. I love it. My number 10 uh, would have made my surprises list, except I put it on this list. Um, and this one I hadn't heard about almost right before Essen. And it made your top ten surprises, mm -hmm. and that's Path of Civilizations. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Man, or Path of Civilization, just one. Mm -hmm. Man, this game is so much fun. It just it to me, a lot of people were comparing it to Seven Wonders, and I was kind of uh, opposed to that feeling. But it really, you know, if you say let's play Seven Wonders, I, I would keep going. But we could play Path of Civilization. It's the same kind of thing in, in many ways. It's a civilization game that's about playing cards and doing things and getting leaders and wonders of the world and all that stuff, but really isn't that strongly thematic. Mm -hmm. It's really about moving a bunch of tracks and different things. But the simultaneous play, the fact that you can play this with five, yeah, and it's other than table space, it doesn't really affect the game much at all. Right. I enjoy that. I just I really enjoy I like the tiebreaker rules in it. I like the I, again, just the, the how fast the game is. You when you first yes. learn about the game, you're like, I'm playing four out of five cards. That's it. Yeah. And two of them don't even do anything. So I move up some tracks. Then I take another card. That's it. But it gets a little bit more involved as time goes by, and your choices spiral, and you're different yeah, than everybody else. That progression is so fun. Kind of like forced progression. You have to discard a card and take a better one. You know. I love that feeling of like. You're always, like, time passes yeah. on, your things get better. I love that. I'm planning on playing this soon. Weight-wise, is it, is it 
heavier than Seven Wonders? Sure, or? sure. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, not heavier, it's heavier that there's more things to pay attention barely. to. Barely. Okay, that's great, man. If it's fast and it's not overly heavy. I mean, heavy. only a dummy would think that this mm. is heavier than Seven Wonders. Checks out. <laughs> anyway, I really enjoy this one. Uh, Path of Civilization. All right, well, number nine is a game that is maybe the newest. It is the newest game on They're my list. It's out. <laughs> yes. It all is out. It's all for 2023. It's technically maybe not out. In like the Veil of Eternity, you mean? Um, Veil of Eternity is out. Not in the United States, it ain't. It's uh, in English. I think internationally, okay? <laughs> so do I. Oh, keep that in mind for my list. Oops. Good. Just um, you just gave a me, lot. You gave me a pass, baby. I, Tom hasn't. That's true. Yeah, Tom doesn't yeah, matter. Let's be, <laughs> let's, be, let's be honest. My number nine is Scholars of the South Tigris. And this is uh, the second in the third trilogy. Oh, by, the second uh, in the third. Yes. Yes. The, yes, the, yes. the penultimate of the third trilogy. Oh, yes. Uh, from the, <laughs> the, the, the people at Garfield. And, and this is what I would consider to be a heavy uh, Euro game. And I just absolutely love the theme in this one. I love this translation idea. I mean, it appealed to me right from the get-go. I know that it didn't work for everybody. You didn't love, you know, that kind of that idea. But I love this idea of... It's your list. We're not putting any... No, no, I'm, I'm aware. Trust me. Trust me. Uh, I, he thought I, wow. Paths of Civilization was heavy. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. So let's everybody take a deep breath. Opinion invalid <laughs> for everything else. Um, <laughs> now... <laughs> I'm good. Go ahead, Mike. Tell <laughs> to, them about Scholars. To be fair, I've liked most of the games that this design team, uh, Shem no. Phillips and, and Sam McDonald, have done. But this one was particularly interesting to me because of the integration of the theme with the mechanics. And uh, I really love the, the, just that whole system of... <laughs> what? I thought a comment that made me laugh. It's nice to see Mike starting to come around and go Yeah, look. Games. They lost me for, uh, you know, <laughs> the last several games. You know, I just, what? Uh, what is this? But now the they got me back. only number nine. Yeah. That's no, true. How many new games how come did Kenny like even have one? this year? Well, you know why it is number nine. It's because I haven't played it as much as the other games on my list. Because uh, it's the convenient. newest. It's, it's the true. newest <laughs> game on my list. Um, it's great. Scholars of South Tigris, if you like uh, heavy Euros, or I'll get sh shouted down by some people, mid-heavy Euros, whatever. Whatever. It's really, really good. If you're not calling us a heavy Euro, come on. I agree. Come on, this is a heavy Euro. I yes. agree. If nothing else, it's a Euro. you got to give me that. <laughs> it is a Euro. All right, my number nine is a tiny game. I believe it was already uh, in Mike's surprises, I want to say. Mm. Um and I'm very glad that this one, I think you said something very similar. I'm very glad this was a return to form for the oh, designer. Oh, nice. This is number nine, Siberion, mm -hmm. from uh, the Oniverse series of games and Impatience. They are the publisher. Uh, Shadi uh, Torbe is the designer. And this is a solo or two-player game with a lot of neat stuff going on. It has this feeling of... Small rewards, small continuous rewards. Mm -hmm. This feeling of every time you do anything, you can turn that into a reward of some kind. You complete, you're using cards to complete these, uh, t you know, machines. targets or, you know, yeah. machine parts or whatever. But that machine part, once you complete it, you set it aside and then you can spend them for another reward. And that reward becomes a an upgrade of the first thing you were doing. So it's this nice cyclical, like, just getting better and everything. Everything you do, you just get better at something. And it feels really good. It retains all the tension of the previous games. It's got that weird look. I know Tom is not a big fan. I have not said this for the last uh, 17 times. Tom hates been. this <laughs> right. artist with a passion. Correct. <laughs> on, a, on a deep, personal level. I yes. mean... <laughs> He's I written some nothing. emails <laughs> that I would be ashamed to have coined. He hasn't sent them. He, he writes them and deletes them, no, but no, I've he, seen he, them. He sent them, but he sent them as Joey Evans. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Anyway, well, I really, really too. like this game. I think it's a wonderful <laughs> solitaire game. If you are in the market 
For a solo game that does not take up a whole lot of room, but has a nice, quick pace and a fun amount of tactics, Siberian's a really, really fantastic one. My number nine. All right, my number nine is one of the most crossed over games on all the different top ten lists of everybody, including contributors, I think, and mm. that is Thunder Road Vendetta. Mm. Just straight up. Um, and I would like to speak very briefly because some people said you're talking about the expansions thrown in to the Thunder Road, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm not going to hide that fact. The right. expansions are amazing. Yeah. They're super fun. But nothing they that's a bunch Kickstarter of exclusive. I think the, the game without right. the expansions is fine. Mm -hmm. It's a good game. I, would, I enjoy it. With the expansions, it's amazing. I think it's fantastic. And I will always play it with them. And I love this game because this is... It's almost... I suppose it's a racing game. I just mm -hmm. blow people up. Yeah. And this game is just a game of stories. Just mm -hmm. crazy stories. By the way, thank you, Jen, for the super chat. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is... I, I, it's hard for me to think about anything about this game I don't like. The, it, it ends at a reasonable time. It mm -hmm. doesn't go on too long. It's mm -hmm. a big Amera trash game in many ways, but, a, but one that ends at a reasonable time. It's exciting all the way to the finish. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, you know, if you're eliminated, then the game's going to end. Mm -hmm. There's... The, the, the big rig is, yeah. a, is a silly way to play. The weapons, the theming. I can see this not being everyone's cup of tea for sure. sure. You know, mm -hmm. some people don't want to play this because if you're not into the theme, this game is going to mean no. nothing no, right. to right, you. Right, right, right. But, uh, it's, in, it's at its heart, if you boil it down and you know who you are, if you boil stuff down, it's a rolling move. It is. To some extent, I think if you look at this cover... And you think it looks really cool, you're gonna like the game. That's likely. You know good, what I mean? As silly as it sounds. That's likely a good test. If yeah. you look at that cover, what you're that, like, mm. what does that cover make you think right. of? Yeah, if you're like, oh yeah, then you might like it. Yeah. So there you go. Thunder Road Vendetta! My number eight is a game that is uh, available internationally, Z. Yeah? <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. It is. okay. This is uh, the, the newest game and the biggest game in size, as silly as that sounds, from this Japanese publisher known as Sashi and Sashi, and this is Come Sail Away. Oh. Um, Come Sail Away. Come yeah, yeah, sail you know. Away. Yeah, I, 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 nail, I named this one on my review, Sticks the Landing. Uh, yeah. uh, so, Come Sail Away is, while it's the biggest box, it's not the heaviest game in uh -huh. there. It's a relatively light, very, very welcoming game that you could teach to, I think, most people. It has, uh, if you're familiar with the idea of Moncala at all, it's going to okay. have those things that are familiar to you. Um, but really, this is a puzzle. Okay. Uh, and, and it's a spatial puzzle. And it's one that I just feel like is so smooth and elegant. I know those words sometimes get overused, but that's what this game makes me feel. I always say that the word that always comes to mind with his game, Sashi's games, is delightful, right? I just, I feel like they're just delightful. And this game is also delightful. You're trying to get passengers onto a uh, cruise ship in the late uh, 19th century, and you're trying to get particular passengers in particular rooms. So uh, they, they make it as thematic as a game like this is going to be. So like if it's the dining room, you want to have, you know, couple Ooh. sitting together, ah. things along those lines. You want to have uh, luggage going to the store to the state rooms, things along those lines, which gives you some bonuses. This is just a really lovely game, and I feel like it's one that would have very wide appeal. Um, and Sashi's games do tend to come to the United States eventually. So um, I'm hoping this becomes very widely available because huh. I think it has... Uh, have you played this, E? You no. Play you no, haven't, I played haven't played this? Played it. I don't think that board looks very attractive, Mike. It's not necessarily a board, it's a module. You're well, putting out things. Okay, fine. Well, again, I don't think that modular thing that acts as a board sure. 
looks. That's that's everyone has one. Everyone has their own ship. So here's the thing, though. I think that you can say that about the art of any of Sashi's games. Is that it's going to be? It, they all look. I think like it this. looks better like that. I don't mm -hmm. mind it as a cover. I think that looks charming and all. Yeah. As a board, I thought, oh, that looks more prototypey for some reason okay. in that form. I'd mm. be interested if you you might still feel that way if you saw. I it. I might like, like the game. Yeah, no, no. I, I'm not saying that. Right. Yeah. No. Uh, but yeah, this has a very particular style. This publisher has a very particular art right. style. And then it can be divisive for sure. I love it. But there you go. My number eight. Come Sail Away. All right. Man, it's stuck in my head all day now. Mm -hmm. My the fault. song. <laughs> See, you need right. to play that game. I guess I do need to play that. All right, my number eight is Come Sail Away. <laughs> <laughs> Come Sail Away. Oh, um, <laughs> that is my number eight. That is my actual number eight. You are a punk. <laughs> You are such a punk. I knew you played this. I'm like, I'm losing my mind here. This is a crossover with my Elysium's number eight. I have played you got got. So away. I got got. You got got. I got got. Big time. Uh, Mike is right. This is a lovely game. Charming, like he said. I love the Mancala vibe of this. You know what this actually makes me think of the most is, uh, let's build a train. Uh, let's build a, a, let's bus, make a bus route. route. Yep. It has that same, like, play 12 very quick rounds. Yes. This game is incredibly fast. It really is. You're doing, but in, instead of, like, connections, it's Mancala. Mm -hmm. You're playing Mancala. Yep. So good. So quick. Lots of nice content in the box. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful game. Mike is right. Um, this, I think, has the theme, the mechanisms, the appeal to be a big hit from them. I agree. I think they, you know, Sashi picks very interesting themes that might not always have the widest of appeals right. or come across as a little esoteric. I think this is this is something that everybody could get into. I could see this getting the yellow treatment like they did with right. Get On Board. Right. I could see this being Ooh, one see of that those. I'm on. Yeah. Ooh, I am on board then. Yeah. There it is. All right, there you go, my number eight. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for the chat. Yes. Super chat. Thank you. By the way, I am not. It's not on my list. I'm not lying to you like others. Come okay, on now. thank you. Come on. It better be this. Your number. I eight. will say, as I'm going through my list, there's gonna. It's gonna look like I'm a pretty strong Ameritrash gamer here for a while. Yeah. Number eight is all about theme, and that is freelancers. Mm. Freelancers, which is straight Gosh. up the sequel to um, Forgotten Waters from Plaid Hat. Where you use an app to go through a story. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual sequel. Though. I didn't say that at <laughs> all. Um, it, it, it's uh, it's in the same series, I think. Yes. It's, it's not a sequel. It's, a, it's in the same series. It's a crossroads. Use yeah. a lot of the same mechanisms. It has a smoother play than than Forgotten Waters. And Forgotten Waters was one of my favorite games already. Mm -hmm. Freelancers has a smoother play to it, and the story is just on fire. It's funny, but Good funny. Mm -hmm. So there's different levels yeah. of funny. There's there's yeah. Munchkin funny, right. which is like the one time joke and everyone laughs. But Freelancers is just a funny story. I, I would consider it, say it's funny almost in the same way that like an Indiana Jones movie is funny. Like maybe, but funnier than that maybe. Right. Even but I thought it was much more more goofy than that. I would say it's funny in the way that like uh, Rick and Morty is, is mm. funny. You know what I mean? It's almost that. Okay. Yeah, you're right. That's that's yeah. well, it's a little. It's a little less like. Raunchy, maybe, but it's <laughs> not if you play with the cursing. I've heard. Well, okay, okay well, no, there you go. no, it's way less raunchy. Have you seen Rick and Morty? <laughs> no, it's that. It's yeah. got that kind of humor, and it's right. very funny. But it's well done. The voice acting, I think, I think I can say this is the best voice acting in any board game, straight up. Not that there's a lot, and with all due respect to my co-host on the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Um, but I, I thought this was phenomenal, and it's a fun game. Different things can happen in each game. It's just it's just an enjoyable romp. Need to play this one. All right. Well, unfortunately, my prediction was incorrect for this year that we talked about today during our board game smorgasbord that a single player only game would break into the top 100. Didn't happen. Didn't well, happen. Is this the Witches game? Or is that not out yet? No, that's out. Um, you know, I'm actually glad you brought that up. It was definitely in consideration. The fact that it was so similar to Resist 
kept me from putting it on the list. We're talking oh. about witchcraft from Salt and Pepper Games. No, my number seven is a solo only game called Legacy of You. Yes, I know. I finally come around to Garfield, and they got two games on my list this year. So far. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Sandra. Sandre, Sandre for the maybe? super yes. chat. Thank you very um, much. So Legacy of You is by Shem Phillips, and it is a solo-only campaign game. Now, I've getting, been getting way burned out on campaign games, but this is campaign done right, in my opinion where it's an indeterminate number of games. Basically, you're either going to... It's a combination of winning or losing seven times, and that's going to okay. lead you to a particular ending. There's a small amount of storytelling, but it's not a huge part of the game. What it is is an efficiency puzzle, which I love. I love efficient, efficiency puzzles. I love multi-use cards. It has that. I, I, it has resource management. It has a really interesting trade system of your resource uh, okay. that that I've never quite seen utilized like it is in this game. There are, like in many games like this, multiple ways to lose, one way to win, although not as many uh, loss conditions as like most co-ops or something. Okay. Basically, you can lose by the flood. You're trying to clear out this kind of river, this canal before the, the flood comes through, and so you're staying ahead of the flood. Or you get overrun by barbarians, which get added mm. more and more across the top of the board. Those are your two ways to lose. And what's interesting is that the way it's set up is that if you lose the game, you draw a defeat card, and what it tells you to do is going to depend on which way you lost. If you lost by the barbarians, do this. If you lost by the flood, do this. Um, okay. Really neat. Really, really neat game. Completely resettable. Um, and you can certainly replay it after you've completed the campaign, but probably not more than three or four times. But it's still worth it, in my opinion. Not Great. more than three or four times. Through the whole campaign. 25, 70 Exactly, games. right? Okay. That's my number seven, Legacy of You. Huh. All right, my number seven, um, I think got a lot of love. I think it is still very popular. It just happened to come out earlier in the year, so I do wonder if it's being forgotten a little bit. But this was one of the bigger hits of the year. And deservedly so. My mm. number seven is Earth. Oh! Earth is a, an excellent game. I thought it did a lot of what these other modern games had been doing. Giant bunch of cards, with all with unique abilities, all with different stuff. That seemed to be a big push over the last few years. Uh, you know, probably best known uh, in Arc Nova. Mm hmm And a few other games that did it. I thought Earth did that thing the best. Yep. It kept its likeness, it kept its its quick turns, it managed to give me this big scope, a lot of things growing, evolving, way different ways to do stuff, but it moved along at a nice clip, I just had to build up whatever it is, these four by three or whatever, that's the game, I mm -hmm. feel like I've, I've, you know, I've accomplished a lot in a small time frame, whereas Arc Nova was a little long for me. I thought it really yeah. kind of took that idea and dragged it out a little bit. So I really enjoyed this one. I like the this feeling of what are you going to do? What, what Which thing are you triggering? Green? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then I get to do all these things on my board. As, I'm, as you're triggering green, I get to activate everything I want. This grows. I get a new card. Every time you look at new cards in this game, you go, ooh, oh, but mm, that really doesn't work with my strategy, but I, but I want it. Uh, no, I guess I won't. Like, mm -hmm. every decision you make is going to be a little bit agonizing in a right. good way. That good agonizing. I really like this game. It's a wonderful card game. Lots of um, fun puzzles built right into the game. Earth is excellent. My number seven. All right, my number seven would probably be higher on my list if it wasn't so plain looking, unfortunately. I love the gameplay a ton. But the game doesn't look that great, I think. And that mm. is Seas of Havoc. I agree with you on the look. Mm. Yeah. I, I'm not the, the box cover here is fine. I, I don't really have any strong feelings on this, but uh, when you look at the board, and probably then mm. uh, yeah, it looks fine. Yeah. And the cards don't have a lot of artwork on them. No. But man, this game, which is a mix between worker placement and then card play, sort of. Well, I should say sort of. There's deck building in the game, but mm -hmm. it's more about getting cards that you want to, you're moving your ships around, and then just shooting at everybody. I mean, it's a little Thunder Road. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and you know what? 
it, actually, the game I think it's closest to is the robot game, the Robot Quest Arena, mm. because they oh, that that same thing. Yeah. That one, you're just moving things around, blowing stuff up. Here, you're doing that, and there's a little bit of negativity when someone right. shoots you because you right. put like a damage card. But there's so many ways to get rid of those. Yeah. Everybody's shooting everybody, and. There's a little bit of almost programming to it, too. I mean, it's like all really light, but like figuring out how your ship's going to be and yeah. where it's going to end up. And and I really love, at the beginning, there's that smash-up mechanism of pick your captain yeah. and pick your ship. And you're, you got special abilities right. on the ship, and your captain gets you, gives you special cards. Yeah. And that's just a fun combo. Yeah. It is. I, I'm just having a really big... Uh, I just really love this one. It's yeah. just a lot of fun. I didn't think I... I think my review of this is probably lower... Than you feel now. Than I feel now. Yeah. Because when I was done, I went and I played it with my kids, and they liked it. And I just had a blast doing it. It's a great three-player game, of all things. Mm -hmm. I, I played it at, at four, too, a lot. But the mm -hmm. three-player just worked really well. So This one just missed my surprises list. I really liked it. I, mm -hmm. I like Rock Manor. They're definitely... I feel like they're a company, which unlike the ones that you're slavishly um, slaves of, um, their like stuff is redundant, different. Yeah? Yeah, I know. I couldn't think of a good word to do that. But yes. No, you nailed it. Mm -hmm. I always like to repeat the same routine. Their stuff is different. <laughs> but no, like, they have Lawyer Up. And, yeah. you know, the, the what's the game they're best known for? The um, the, the, the Apocalypse. Yes. Yeah. And they have these games, and they're very different games. Mm -hmm. I think that's neat sometimes, um, yeah. rather than saying, which of uh, the Tigers games is this? Mm -hmm. No, I get that. Uh, I'm, I'm, the I'm, ultimate I'm, one. It's, no, that's a I'm fair. Being, I'm being fair. a little silly, but that, that's not quite true. But I do like that they try to, it feels like they start not theme first, mm -hmm. but close to theme first, and that's just fun for me. Yeah. So, Seas of Havoc. All right, my number six is a game that we actually played live here during our Winter Spectacular. What? And it's a game that I have a strong suspicion is actually going to grow in, in esteem for me. And, and, and uh, I would not be surprised to see this entering my top 100 if it hasn't already. Um, this is the Fox Experiment from, oh. from Elizabeth Hargrave and Jeff Frazier. This game really, Speaking really. Reprinted by Garfield game. Yeah. Well, look. <laughs> this is my top twenty. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I got you here. No, this game is terrific. If, first of all, it's fast. It is fast. It does not overstay its welcome. One thing it does do is have ridiculous table spread. But I, other than that, I think this game is terrific. It's a game where you are rolling by the end of it ludicrous amounts of dice, but never feels like it's random and completely luck dependent. Right, I, I just I never feel like what I rolled had a, a too much of an influence. There, sure, there are times where you're like, oh man, I wish I can re-roll this one, or I wish I got a couple more of those wild tokens. But for the most part, you are building things up throughout mm -hmm. the game, and I love that feeling of progression, especially in a game this short, where you start with you know what usually four dice you're rolling on your first right. up, and then you're already in the second round getting more and more if you've kind of gone that route. Um, I, I like the, uh, the scoring of the game. I think that it's simple to understand, but you've got multiple things you're working for. I like the turn order. I, like, I tend to like when games turn order actually matters. Yeah. And in this game, when you're selecting three things at the beginning of every round, one of them being turn order, that can really be a huge decision. Yeah. And I like it. It's not inconsequential. It, it, it really matters to the extent that sometimes that is the first thing you select. Sure. Um, really nice production. I really like the theme. Uh, so Fox Experiment, I just think, is a really, really good game that I'm just liking it more and more the more I play it. And I played it a lot this year. Yeah. yeah how, how I don't, quick it moves is yes. definitely a big, big plus. It, there's the newness factor to it, right? Recency sure. bias that I'm like, better than Wingspan. I don't know if that's quite true, but I, it probably isn't because Wingspan has a wider range of difference between games because there's so many different birds, it right? It does, but but just to be clear, I, I know this is not going to be the norm, but recency bias is not as much of an issue for the three of us because I, we've been playing it from early this year. Oh, no, 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 we played it last year. Oh, that's what I'm saying, yeah. So we, yeah. I've played this game a lot. I right. know it's just got released for most people, 
but we played it a lot. Uh, so. I definitely don't like it more than Wingspan. I don't think it's a fair comparison. They're not well. It's the same designer, and they're both nature games. But that, mm -hmm. that's my but only it's comparison. Nothing like they're Wingspan. Really alike I don't think all. it's any better than Wing. It's definitely not, in my opinion, better than Wingspan. But it is a really good game, mm -hmm. and it does its own things, which mm -hmm. I really enjoy. It's its own creation. All right, my number six. Speaking of its own creation, this is one that's going to get compared to the first creation quite a bit. Because it's a follow-up to a giant, giant game, Scythe. Oh. This is Expeditions. Wow, this made your top ten. Expeditions, a sequel to Scythe. Talk about a double-edged sword. You put on that box a sequel to Scythe, on the good side of that sword, you're going to get a lot of people wanting to look at your game, picking up your game, because they love Scythe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other side of that argument is everyone is going to compare this game to... <laughs> Sai, one yep. of the best regarded games of the last two decades. Yep. That's that's a tough, you know, hill to climb. I very much enjoy this game because I love card driven stuff and I love that this game gives you a little bit of a lot of things I really enjoy. Mm. Exploration. A little bit of it is is plenty for me and I really enjoy that feeling of move onto a tile, flip it over. Ooh, this is the tile that lets you do the whatever thing. Great. Mm -hmm. My mech is on there. I can take that action. Action selection. This really neat idea where you get to do three things. Move, play a card, do the whatever, and then you have to always move and do two of the three. When you take a rest action and recall all your stuff, one time, you get to do all three of them. It's a minor thing, but it's a fun little, like, ding, ding. You, you did great. <laughs> you give you a little bonus. I love the personality in the game, the feeling of those characters and your little companion. The setting is even more bizarre than than Scythe. That's a good point because you got the meteors and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, it's, it's Scythe's world where these meteor meteorites or meteors or whatever have fallen from the sky. There's sort of an alien entity about. Uh, there's something strange going on. I love it. The weird purple glows and the strange things contaminating people and what have you. Um, I really like this one. I think it's a great game. Uh, it it's sings for me. I've been hearing some people say, like, oh, Expeditions is kind of a miss this year. Mm -mm. And it might be. I have no idea. But for me, this is a really neat design. It works for me because I like all the things it's doing. And while they each individually kind of feel smaller than Scythe, I don't have a problem with that. I really like the scope of this one, and I think it scales down better than Scythe. I can play this at two players, no problem. Where Scythe is just really not, not that good with lower yeah. player counts. So for me, Expeditions was a hit this year, and that's why it's my number six. Yeah, the player count thing is interesting because I really like Expeditions, obviously. Um, but I wish that the map scaled for larger player counts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was an odd decision to me that it didn't. Right. But. It really is a weird thing. I don't get that. Yeah. I just chalk it up to there's always some sort of playtesting thing with sure, a, sure, a sure. Stonemeyer game. Right. Yeah. But yeah, no, I like this one a lot. Yeah. My number six, I almost did not play because it was a large box and I do not like the base game that this is based on at all. And yet it's just a fantastic I game. Think I and know it's what just it Tales is. Yep. from Red Dragon Inn. Mm. Um I'm getting a little tired of dungeon crawls. There's so many of them. I love them, but I, how much effort it is. And then Red Dragon in, I was like, eh, okay, mm. maybe, whatever. These guys are making a dungeon crawl. Yeah. And it's, I just love this game. So many things about it I love. I love the maps are, there's 25 maps when you play through this. And it's done. Everything's on that map. The monster stats are on that map. The terrain is on a map. You open up the map. Now you might need to put out a few tiles based on some stuff going on. But... The characters themselves level up. They have a really neat system where they have these cards that you can use, but whenever you use it, then you need to put like some focus tokens on it, and then each round one comes off. But one of your actions can also be like, um, instead of this action, I'm just going to take two of these tokens off or something mm. like that. And that that's pretty smooth. And, you've, and you also, it's not that hard. <laughs> it's reasonable. I'm not saying that it's, I mean, you can make it hard too. Yeah. I played on the easiest setting, I had a blast, and it still was a little challenging, but it wasn't like, oh, here we go again. You're killing monsters right and left. It's silly fun. One of the characters, I mean, they're characters from Red Dragon Inn, so they have right. these silly things, but one of them has a rabbit, that, this crazed rabbit. 
So if you have that rabbit, you roll the die and you see what the rabbit does. <laughs> but it might be launching at the nearest enemy and biting it, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever it might be. Yeah. It's usually right. pretty helpful. And that's just a funny thing to have that in is, the mix. Yeah, that's fun. And the characters also feel very different. Mm -hmm. It is a blast. It works well for kids, works well with adults, has a lot of story. I mean, there's a lot of game in there. Mm. This is so, this is like so unexpected. I haven't played it. Yeah, me neither. Or I might have made my unexpected, you know, surprises list. Right. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I would just assume that a Red Dragon Inn game is like Red Dragon Inn, right. and I kind of don't really like those, so. Yeah. It's wild that it this really is, is so different. It sounds so different. It is, and I didn't put it in the Dice Tower Library because it's a campaign sure. game, right. and you like almost you don't want to have to resort out all the cards each time mm -hmm. that you play it. But I did take it home so I could play it some more with the yeah. kids because we just had a blast. And I, not spoiling their list because I just played a few bit ago, but it made both my kids top ten, yeah. five. So yeah, nice. Top half of the list. Da, 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 Top da, da. half of the list. This is now, now we're getting to the good games. That's right. Let's get, get to the good games. Time. You got to bring that golden nugget out every year, right? You got to got to go with these are the good games. Here it is. The it's good almost one. he that, uses it like eight times in the top one hundred too. I know, but finally, it just, it's like um, it's like a warm <laughs> cup <laughs> of like chicken Vomit. noodle soup. Mm. It's comforting when you come with that. I'm like, yes. This is an official top ten now. Right. Thank I'm glad you. Mike understands. Thank you for that. And doesn't mock me. Right. Openly. <laughs> while we're live. My number five is a game that is from a publisher that I really think is on the rise. Mm. Um, it's an international games. publisher. Uh, I think Sit Down Get Games it. arrived a long time rise, ago. Sit down oh, 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 oh. Come on now. It's go I give you gold. Why don't you eat that now chicken soup? Now we're getting to the good games. Have some chicken soup. Um, <laughs> Joke doesn't work the second time. <laughs> My number five is Life of the Amazonia from uh, Bad Comet Games. Oh, yeah, I should have known this was on your list. Oh, this is such yes. a great You're game. You're the only person who liked the first one. Well then, no. Well, their first one was Shaolia, which I, I really, really like, and you I'm sorry, I don't mean Shaolia. The, yeah. the one that Wild Serengeti I like too, although it has flaws that I absolutely see. The main one being, it's not a very good game. <laughs> no, no, I don't agree with that. I think it's too long. Um, right, that makes it not a good game. No, I don't. No, no. I disagree with that. I just, no, yeah, no, I just think it's no. too long. Some games are too long and and bad. Right. Well, that's not one of them. Life of the Amazonia is a fantastic, fantastic game where you are creating your own little ecosystem, your own uh, Amazonian ecosystem in front of you. You're doing this by um, getting animals uh, and putting them onto appropriate terrain for those animals, mm -hmm. and that's in the service of scoring cards which are going to be based on different things patterns perhaps or types of animals in that certain terrain or their proximity to flowers or trees um, all of that sounds very very you know kind of like by the numbers but this game in for some reason just is, feels satisfying because you've got different things going on you've got the tracks which that waterfall is three different tracks that you can move up mm. that give you boons and that's satisfying and you've got different animals that have different, you know, they don't just score one, one way. You can pick at the beginning of the game which way you want them to score. Replayability. Right. It's got a table presence which is ridiculous. At the end of the game, everybody, win or lose, is going to want to take a picture of the little habitat they made in front yes. of them because it looks fantastic. This company, this uh, uh, per, uh, why, why am I having trouble? I keep wanting to say production. This uh, publisher is well known for having really nice screen printed wooden meeples, yeah. right? And uh, so that was the hallmark of Wild Serengeti, and uh, it's definitely here, and it's in their upcoming game, Wondrous Creatures, which I'm soup. That would be in my mm -hmm. most anticipated games if we were doing those. Love this game. Spoiler alert. Life, well, you know, maybe. Life of the Amazonia, my number five. So good. This was on my short list. Mm hmm. But A, that stupid waterfall, and I'm sorry, that's a pain in the neck. I, it really is. You have to assemble it. It's not easy to assemble. You actually don't have to and assemble yes, it. And yes, you could then, no, but it doesn't sit flat well either. There's not yeah. a flat board alternative. If there was, I wouldn't complain about it. Then put three 
side by side next to each other. I'm sorry, to keep that off of your top ten, I think, is kind of... Petty? Good. A little bit, yeah. Good. Make a better one. Okay. Secondly, there are some minor things. I think that scoring, while it's awesome, they're not it, They're not always easy to understand those scoring things. I have a hard time teaching them to new people. I'm saying, okay. you know, this matches with this. Yeah. And, and there's a lot... When you're looking at them, you're like, okay, I want to take this one and I put it here. There's a lot of things I like about it. It mm -hmm. just it feels like it's slightly bigger than it needs to be. Just slightly. Okay. I love the bag building. I like yeah. it a lot. Don't get me wrong. I didn't it. even mention the bag building, yeah. yeah. The game is very good. It definitely feels like Cascadia all grown up. Yes. If you are someone who likes Cascadia and you find that too light for your taste, you need to take a look at yeah. Life of the Amazonia. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Cascadia has the five animal scoring, right? Is yeah. it five? I believe so. Five. Something like that. This yeah. has eight, mm -hmm. and that's not even the game. There's, I mean, that's not the whole game. There's no. also these things out here. Mm, uh, that's what know, I the, meant by all grown up. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Anyway, great game. Good choice. Thank you. Stupid waterfall. <laughs> My number five. The waterfall from this game. Let's hope it's Life of the Amazonia. No, it's not. That's oh, I, saw, I saw you. Oh, it was on your surprise. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay, my number five is Ticket to Ride Legacy mm. Legends of the West. You have not played this, Mike, yes? I played, no, we played, I played a session of it with you guys. He subbed in for Joey. That's right. right. That's right. I yeah, yeah okay. So you've got a taste of it. I got a pretty good taste. Um, Ticket to Ride Legacy. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you too much about the game itself. Obviously, it's a legacy version of Ticket to Ride. It... It's not one that I would say is... I'm trying to choose my words carefully here. Mm. I don't think it's mechanically revolutionary. And I don't think it will be to anyone who plays it. I agree. Okay? Mm -hmm. I don't, don't, don't go into this expecting maybe if you played Pandemic Legacy Season 1 and some of the stuff in there you felt was revolutionary. Don't expect the same feeling. This one goes more the tried and tested route. Yeah. You know, like, there's mechanisms in here that you've seen in other things that will come together well, will give you a really fun experience. If you like that feeling, and you like the setting, obviously, but if you like that feeling of, let's open up another thing, let's see what it is now, let's see what, the, what, what flavor gets added to the stew now, what flavor, I, I'm trying to be careful <laughs> about spoilers, but things come in and things leave, um... The evolution of those things. Every game I sat down to play, every time we sat down to play this, I was excited to have at it again, to see those parts come together again. That's I really enjoyed this. This is about as, as comfort food as you can get with a legacy game that's always changing underneath your feet. Would you say it's like a warm bowl of chicken soup? I will tell you this. We're getting to the good part of the list now. <laughs> <clears throat> My number five is Ticket to Ride Legacy Legends of the West. All right. My mm. number five is not on either of your lists. And finally, it's a departure from this Ameritrash stuff. This, this game is all Euro all the time. And it's also, for many people, the, very visually similar to the tie I'm currently wearing. Mm. And that is Arborea. I uh, really love this game. Wow, you liked it that much. I really Top do. Ten of all time? Top five. It's in the good ones. Oh. Um, and not of all time, of this year. No, no, no. It's all time. This game is so much fun. <laughs> I think it's because it lets you do so many cool things. On your turn, you have these little dudes, and they're on these. I, I keep calling them surfboards. It's, that's not what they are, but they're sliding pieces. And you can jump off, or you can wait to another turn and jump off later, but the... The longer you wait, the more the stuff you get. It's very similar in many ways to Zulkin in that regard, except mm. it doesn't have the gears. It has sliding tiles. But it's faster than that, and there's just so many different goodies and so many different ways you can score points. It's a very point salad -y style game. You're building a little tablet in front of you and getting monsters to go to that. But that main mechanism of jumping off and then you slide down this path and get all these symbols. Mm. You get everything you cross. It's just so much fun. I really like it. It... It's like it's shoots and ladders. Like I said, would you like. say this is the gamer's version of Candyland? <laughs> yes, or? I would say that. That's great. Okay. And you get to and you get to jump off on someone else's turn, which is also good. I like that too. You know, you decide when to jump off the track. It's a lot of fun. Huh. Uh, and yes, I will argue that the the lack of tan in this game. There's nothing tan in it. <laughs> 
that's the there's truth not. It's like they you. definitely. It's like if if there's a continuum, yeah. they broke the other end of the continuum. That's right. Yeah. I mean, they tried to get that Skittle sponsorship, it just didn't work out. Yeah, uh, but I really Skittles was like, calm down, Arboria. Really? No, yeah, okay. I'm good with Taste the Rainbow, but this is ridiculous. This is not the only Euro on my list, but it's definitely, I would say, the heaviest Spoiler. one because there's a lot going on in it. Arboria. <laughs> Yeah, that was the lie you were told. Mm, that was yeah. You remember I, that? It still stings. You remember that? Yeah, I, I do. Played it even. It still stings. And I, I like, thought I can trust you. Is my next one? Mm. No, man. That was your first and possibly your last mistake. You're dead to me. My number four is a crossover. See, I just come out and tell people. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, but there's so many games. Is it a crossover be. with me? Yeah. No. Yeah. About yeah. That? No. How Wait, about hold that? on. I feel lied to. How about that? No. No. It was going to be, but, oh. but now it's a crossover with Tom. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> really? The time continuum was exploding in my mind. Well, the only one on my list I could see you, you putting out there is the Thunder Road. My number four is Thunder Road Vendetta. This game, um, if it wasn't in my top ten, would have been number one on my surprises list. Right. Because I didn't have any connection to Thunder Road as a kid. I probably played it, but it didn't make an impact on me. Okay. All right? And... The first time we played this, first time I played it was here, okay? And I was so shocked at the feelings that it brought up. I mean, it brought up nostalgia for something I never had. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I was like, I feel like this game was trying to evoke particular emotions. It was trying to convey a play experience, right? This was not about mechanisms. This was not about things like that. It was about trying to create experiences every game. Yeah, that's really interesting, and that's got to be hard. And, to do. and they nailed it. They nailed it. Thank you for the super chat. Till, thank you. Um, Till played way more games than uh, Z did. Not apparently so. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's a lot of games. Um, this is a game where winning is great. But I will always choose the riskier option. I in this agree. Game. <laughs> I always will too. Like if I, if there's a chance I could do this jump right. and crash here and do that, right? We're doing it. If there's a way that I could <laughs> launch off a ramp and there's a good chance I'm hitting a mountain, I'm launching off the ramp. You know what the thing is though, because sometimes it works out. And when it works, it's so glorious, right? And actually, it's very modular, right? This game is is. It's got so many things, and, and even just within the base, although I will say I'm with you, Tom. I think this argument is kind of a false argument that, oh, just the base game. No, just the base game is fine, but I always want to have Chop Shop, right? I always want to have the powers. Um, I don't need to have everything, and I've never actually played a game with everything in it. You I know? don't. Yeah, that's, that's madness. Yeah. yeah, right. But this Mad is... Mad madness! You know, the, the Max, fact... Max, the, Max madness. The yeah. fact that the production of the game is not my favorite element of it says something about it. Oh my it. gosh. Yeah, because yeah, it's an amazing production. So there you go. My number four, Thunder Road Vendetta. If it's even a little appealing to you, you should try it. I haven't played this one yet. <laughs> <laughs> my number four is Thunder Road oh, Vendetta. Oh, really? We are <laughs> Two times. rocking this. Two times. Will you forgive me now, Mike? Will you be my friend? That one made up for the other one. What? Yeah? Yes. See? We're good again. We're good again, Tom. Yes. Now we're turned it's on. It's like you. when uh, <laughs> I liked it better this when is you like were uh, when Ross and Rachel got back together. Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. Is that from Seinfeld? <laughs> Pivot. <laughs> All right. Which Thunder season? Road Vendetta is my number four. Everything. You, it was on your list just now as well. Yes. Yes. This is our first three-way cross. There we go. Everything these guys already said. Uh, game's excellent. Uh, I like it. With. I'll tell you what. For me, base game, if I'm playing with non-gamers, yeah. awesome game, really fun. Chop Shop, if I'm playing with gamers. Yeah. That's it. And in fact, that's all I have, because I like that box size. Right. That like, is pretty good. That's a, I like it's the a good box combo. size. I can fit Chop Shop in there Yeah. in the base game, and it's about you know that big as opposed to maximum chrome, which is amazing, mm -hmm. but it's, 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 it's a big box. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing I'll lie. These guys said it all. Incredible game. Such a fun, packed box. Mm -hmm. Number four. 
All right, my number four is a crossover with Z. That's what I'm talking about. Make a guess, Z. Which one is it? I'm guessing Earth. Now, uh, it is Ticket to Ride Legacy. Oh. Oh. Now, I no longer put Legacy games on my top 100 because I don't keep playing them over and over again. That being said, I'm currently in my second playthrough of this. I'm playing it with my family because ah. I enjoyed it that much. What? It is one of my favorite Legacy games. It is... Z's right. There's not mechanically not astounding, and I would argue story-wise, my mind wasn't blown either. No, 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 no. That's not really it. That's, it's weird, but that's not what it goes. But it for. was a fun mm -hmm. trip. It was a yeah. really fun trip. There's 12 games, and it's 12 fun games. That's it. And yeah. each of the 12 games felt different than the other ones. And it's really interesting. I mean, going through now to see the differences because there are differences, which I will tell you off camera. <laughs> tell um, me now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it because just things that are happening in different orders, and that changes how this game plays. It's also easily the most replayable legacy game afterwards. Yes, right. Um, and so when we're done playing as a family, we'll keep it to play we'll later. Play it. That's kind of cool. So anyway, I just enjoyed it a lot. Take it to ride, legacy. Mm. Physically possible. My number three. Hey, everybody. Uh, we should just have a compilation of all the things that are said on these the breaks. Bits and pieces? Yeah. Let's not do let's that. Let's not ever do that again. <laughs> ever. Or again. No, let's never do it in the first place. My number three is an international game, Zeke. Um, and <laughs> this is a pure Euro. Uh, I've got a couple of them. Yeah, we've already talked about a couple. Um, but this one, it's just, to me, a special game. It's Ostia. This is... A, oh, wow. Yeah, this is oh, a... I haven't played this one yet. It's so good. I haven't played and I This is actually, of all the games on all three of our lists, have fun trying to get this one. Well, except that, A, they're in January doing a reprint. So you'll be able to back for a reprint with along with an expansion if you want it. Um, and B... I'm not 100% I feel like I'm, all you needed was A, but go ahead. Well, but I also believe that it's going to be picked up by a, a North American publisher. I'm not positive that on that. That I haven't heard. Um, I mean, that would be weird to have both of those things happen, Mike. It's happened before. Mike, when, when, Mike, when Mike first times. mentioned this, I went to go buy it, and I just couldn't pull the trigger yeah. on it. It was so expensive. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not cheap um, to, on the second-hand market by any means. But this is a... Beautiful, beautiful production, of course, because I say of course because this publisher actually, their business was creating wooden components for board games. And then they started getting into board games. The oh. one that really put them on the map was Aqua Garden, which is by the same designer as Ostia. But they have a lot of really good games. And the, the central uh, mechanic or mechanism of the game is a Moncala style. It, it has some Ooh. similarities to Trajan. As a matter of fact, it was listed as a inspiration by the designer they don't shy away from it but unlike trajan where you've got these what many people feel are disconnected mini games these uh all of the actions on your mancala are directly leading to a shipping you've got you've got shipping lanes that you're going down and so it's not disconnected in any way i also like how the mancala is twofold the place you start from however many ships are in that little wedge are going to give you that many of the resource that that port produces. Okay, I like that. So you that. start with the resources, then you do the pick up, drop, and take the action of the place you end. I love that. Yeah, it's a really neat little twist, uh, but it's it's significant and uh, just a really really solid Euro, fantastic looking game. Uh, Ostia is one that if you get a chance to play it, you should really check it out. If I swear, if your number three is Ostia, <laughs> <laughs> I've never played it. My number three is Austin. No one believes you anymore when you say that. No, that one I definitely uh, have not played, but it looks great. I like that idea. Mm. If anyone wants to get rid of a copy for <laughs> Dice Dot Library, we're looking for one. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, my number three was um, is a game that's had a lot of predecessors, but this one I thought changed enough, and I enjoyed those changes enough where I knew it was going to come in somewhere important on my mm -hmm. you know in my end of the year wrap up 
This is Marvel Zombies, mm. a Zombicide. Game. Wow. Wow. Marvel Zombies. I'm surprised it's as high as three. Yeah. It really kind of rewrote the game. It changed enough. Now, to be fair, zomb Zombicide games have been around for a while now, and they keep doing iterative changes, small changes from version to version. They change this, they change that, they take away the noise, they add a single token for noise, they, the doors are pre-printed, they're not pre-printed, this connects to that, whatever. This game, I remember distinctly reading the rule book that I think they posted online when it first was on Kickstarter, and I would do that thing, you probably know what I'm talking about, where you're reading something and you're going, ooh, I, bet, I hope they change this rule to that other thing. And sure enough, three lines later, I'm like, they did. That's how it works now. Mm. Oh, and I hope that the, the I don't know, that the noise thing is gone. Sure enough, it's gone. It's like, oh, I hope that your missus no longer hit your friends. Sure enough, no longer does that. All these things, all these changes, the game is punchier. It's faster. There is a much better way in which you draw abilities and they're one use. So you go through these and you're like, I'm doing something amazing. Search another one. Ooh, now I can do this thing. It's so interesting. You have kind of, again, there's kind of two ways to play here. Uh, you being the zombies, that's another really, really big one where you, the players, are zombies, but you can play the other side Actually, of that. Actually, like, that's my favorite way to play. Yeah, you can also just be superheroes fighting zombies. They're both really different, you know, in, in many ways. You have, like, hunger, hunger track that you have to keep an eye on if you're zombies. But I really like everything they kind of update it, you know, and it feels way more effortless to play this game now than it ever has before. Uh, this is one that's going to hit the table a lot more because it's so easy to bring out, it's so easy to s set up and play, and it wraps up way quicker. So, Marvel Zombies, love it. I think it's a, I think it's the best Zombicide version that's mm -hmm. ever been done. I want to make a quick comment. A couple of people have mentioned that uh, they see that BGG rank uh, puts Ostia as a 2022 release. It's not. It was. Ah. It, it, they began delivery in December, late December of 2022. So you got it at the beginning of, of 2023. Overruled. Thank you. How big can an asterisk be? Massive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my there number three. Plastic is cool. I like plastic in games, but you know what? Sometimes wood trumps that, and it does in this game. What? This is World Wonders. Wow. World Wonders. All right, fine. <laughs> just has little wooden monuments, mm -hmm. the little wonders of the world that are wooden, and it looks fantastic. You are so proud when you take one of them and put it in your area. It's great. It's such a good game. The, the tile laying, putting out the monuments... And like Z said, and this wasn't your surprises, right? Yeah. 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 That whole idea of spend all your remaining actions to get a monument. And for someone like me who wants every monument in existence, that's a tough rule. <laughs> that's a tough one. Because <laughs> I is. don't want to waste all my actions doing no. that. But you're going to get some monuments. Yeah. They're, you're just going to as the game goes by. And it also, it, then you look at your, it's such a satisfying thing. These polyomino games are always satisfying to fill the things up. Yeah. This, this takes that and ups it a level. And it's also an easy game to play. It plays pretty quickly, and it feels tight, very interactive. Like, Mike, I swear, if you take that tile. You know, <laughs> it really is. Our civilizations guy. will be at war, even yep. though it doesn't exist in this game. It's, right. it's great, and I am so excited to play the new expansion. And all wow. it is is more World Wonders. That's perfect. I don't care. That's a perfect expansion for that game. Yeah. Also, we have... Never mind. But uh, look for our Kickstarter next year. <laughs> very exciting. <laughs> oh! I am a spoiler! Oh! Boo -boo! What? Massive asterisk. <laughs> what We're getting to the good games mean? now. World Wonders. Don't give me your leftovers. <laughs> Stop. It. This is actually. I'm thinking about it. This. This is a little bit of a different. Top 10 for me for a year top 10 because... Because I'm class. Because I'm like well, No, it's not that. Um, it's that more of my games were from the first part of the year than probably in any of Which my other... Which is pretty rare, right? It because really is. Because of releases. Yeah, Second like yeah. half of the year is really the loaded half. Yeah, so, you know, Ostia was that right there and right at the beginning of the year Ostia also. Ostia was technically 2022 it was even. not 2022. <laughs> um, 
Mm, that's a great. This is a disagree. crossover with Tom. No, with Z, not with Tom, with Z. Although I'm wondering if it's going to be a. We'll see. My number two is Earth. Yeah, baby. Earth. Yes, Earth, sir. Earth. This game. Z already eloquently spoke about it, and, and I, <laughs> I kind. echo what what Z says. <laughs> to me, again, this is a, a game that gives you the feel of games that take much longer, and I feel like it is. A card game, maybe like, um, this is not a good comparison, but like um, uh, Through the Ages is a card game that doesn't feel like other card games. You know what I mean? It feels okay. like a bigger game. Earth is a game that really is just a card game, kind of tableau builder, but yet it feels kind of more than that to me. Yeah. In a, still a very short amount of time. Um, yeah, I. this is one that is just... I loved it at the beginning of the year. I gave it a 10, but I still gave it a 10. It might go down a little bit, um, but not by much. And I still play it throughout the year. I'm, just, you know, you want me to play it now? I'll play it now. I'm happy to play it. I have, it is not worn out on me. Just a spectacular game that, to, to me, kind of came out of nowhere. I, I, I didn't know anything about it. And when we were playing, I, you know, I've, I've, I said it at the time. It made me feel giddy. I was so. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is. Someone actually, and I don't usually talk about comments that were made, but somebody made a comment about that giddy thing. They're like, well, of course it made you giddy, Mike. It lets you do whatever you want. Yeah. 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 What's wrong with that? It lets me do what I want to do. Anarchy. Right. That's great. Also, restrictive games are great when they're good. Sure. This isn't that game. That game. It wasn't trying to be. Right. I like freedom more than anarchy. Yeah. So. Mm -mm. Burn it down. Fantastic. Number two, Earth. My number two is a card game, a bit comparable to Earth, even smaller, mm. but again, it gives really? me that feeling of oh, it's that one. Yeah. And then I re and then I played it again, and I liked it. You want to guess, Tom? I think I, I know what it is. I think it's Far Shuffle. No, I think it's Ancient Knowledge. Ooh, one of the two of you is right. It's a wonderful game. It gives me that feeling of puzzliness. It gives me that feeling of having to be careful with my combos. And this has a great oh, idea man, built right. into yeah. it mm -hmm. in which combos decay yeah. over the passage of time. It's ancient knowledge. Though 4 Shuffle is a wonderful <laughs> card game as well. Yeah, Not in my top ten. Um, ancient knowledge is excellent. I really enjoy, again, clean card design. A few different rules and things to worry about. You have two things you need to worry about mainly. The always on abilities, those are the ones sitting on your board, and then the ones across the top of your board that decay over the passage of time. I love that idea. The idea that the game found an elegant way to break your combos and force you to make new ones. What a stroke of genius. I love that. I remember when the original 51st Date came out years ago, Ignacy, the designer, had a limitation on every card that it only worked three times. And then you'd have to you'd do this replacement thing. Mm. And the reason was because he wanted you to replace the cards. <laughs> there wasn't a reason, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, in fact, he's, he's written about it very humorously in, in uh, subsequent uh, printings of the game, and the new versions no longer do that thing. I think this game manages to still do that thing where you can't do it forever yeah. elegantly. I love that. I can set a card way over here in the yeah. sixth slot, slot and it works for a long time. Whatever it does is great. Or I have one that goes just in, in number two and I have only two rounds to utilize it to mine it out or, or gain, gain the knowledge of it or whatever I need to do. I love that combination. Just managing cards with abilities is one of my absolute favorite Delights in board games. This gives me plenty of that. So my number two, Ancient Knowledge. You gotta try it if it's you like that kind really of game. Really good game. All right, my number two. I was actually surprised was my number two because when I I knew it might make my top twenty, and the more I played it, the more I thought about it, it just kept moving wow. all the way up. And it is a crossover with you, I think. Um, this game is amazing, and it's just a small little game I played it so many times this year. And that is Veil of Eternity. Ah. I love this game. Number I really two. do. Wow, that's it's amazing. It's so smooth, man. I just it's great. Because 
I don't know. I mean, you, I, I don't think you had even mentioned this to me yet. You might have mentioned it in an aside. Mm -hmm. And I took it in a pile of games. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, we'll just try this one out. Oh, you don't get change? Oh. That, when I first read that rule, I was like, oh, what a dumb... I hate lack of change and all yeah. that. And that's a great it's rule huge. of this game. It's huge. Oh, there's take that cards in it. I don't know if I like it. They're actually... You take that against yourself in this mm -hmm. game sometimes because you need to clear out a card. Right. And so... There's just yeah. so many cool little combos. Yeah. My only complaint about the game would be like, I want to see like 30 more cards. That's like true. Like a little pack you can plug in there, 30 mm -hmm. more cards. But even still, I don't feel like I've seen everything in this game. I just love playing it. I like teaching it because it's it's a kind of game that as you play it, you're like, ooh, ooh, oh. <laughs> and it's, yeah. it's just fun. Yeah. It, it takes a lot of games that use cards for multiple things. Mm-hmm. And condenses it down, and it feels like a CCG with almost a Pokemon a style theming, mm -hmm. yeah, and it yeah, just yeah. makes it very accessible. I really love this game. So good. It's fantastic. Give me your hat. <laughs>See, I don't know if I know Mike's. I honestly don't know if I know either of yours. I don't know either one of yours. I barely know my own. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on. No, you think. Da, 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 da. Wait, I knew yours a minute ago. It was like, oh, yeah, that, that's Z's number one. Mike, what's, uh, what's your number one? Here's a clue, Tom. You've played it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks. You didn't like it very much. Hmm. I don't know what it is, but I already... think you thought it was mediocre. My number one is a game that is far from mediocre. It's outstanding, and it is Ice. Um, oh, right. You told me you... When I told Mike, I was like, yeah, this oh. game ain't that great. Mike's like, I played it ten times. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. I have not played this. Really, I, I haven't played this. Um, uh, yeah, I've played the heck out of this game. Um, it, it, there's Everything about it, I think, is just... Again, it's, this is a game that, that speaks to me. Number one, you've got player powers that are unique, but not so unique that you're playing a different game than the other players at the table. You're all doing okay. the same things. You are playing as um, people that are excavating, expedition leaders who are digging, or, yeah, digging down through these ice layers to try to get artifacts, which are represented by those hex tiles that you see on the player boards there. So you've it's not got as cool as it sounds. Oh, you're just finding, I'm sorry. You're it, just finding hexes of different colors. No, I, you're you're being way too reductive. It's it those. How am I? They're not different. They're 100 percent different. They give you they give there's you powers. Five, I mean, there's five different colors. It's not like you're like, oh, I found the sword of whatever, or I found the binoculars. I don't, I don't of want all the scenes. sword of whatever. I want the one that like, get, allows me to do a particular power that I know, and I only need to remember five of them. I don't need to read a rule book. They have abilities. Yeah. Then, then you're wrong, Tom. Right. You're being reductive. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Come on, um, now they do something. Yeah. No, not... no, I'm saying that, but I'm just saying that you... It's not like... Are I... they boring? A hundred percent. Do I wish Mike would shut up? Yes. <laughs> but they have different abilities. You can't abilities. play both sides. I do what I want, good and, sir. Uh, you also are not going to get your wish, because I'm not done yet. The top layer of ice, <laughs> oh, the back no, of those kidding, have one-time use powers that you can play, uh, which I think is great. The I think... I think they're too wild and crazy random, those no, powers. They're, they're not. There's also some take that in them. A little bit. So what? You just got done talking about a game that had take that in it. I, I rest my case. Yes. <laughs> what? You're the worst lawyer right. in the world. <laughs> exactly. No, this game is, is this is, I think, a, a special game. And it's <sighs> not just the ridiculously stellar production. I like that you have... It really is beautiful. Yeah, you have neutral uh, archi ar architects that you can use, that other players can use. I just think this game does so many things well. The card play, I think, is interesting. So this is a game that really... Um, you know, I hoped would be good, of course. I had backed it, and I thought, you know, this is, if nothing else, this game is going to be beautiful on the table. The fact that it has a game that I love so much is great. It has an action point system, I think, done right. Um, an action point system for the modern age, and, uh, and I like that system. But, I, you oh. know, you have a point about the old school, you know, that it makes turns too long. That's not the case here. So, ice... My number one. Uh, ah, yeah, that's more of a. It's more of a resource management. I don't even think action points because it's it's going around. 
I mean, it is an action point system. I mean, no, you're right. Yeah, I yeah. guess you're different actions take different numbers of points. Well, that's, a, that's it. That's the giveaway mm, there. Yeah, yeah. We used to have an argument. Please. I'm sorry, sir. Okay, you just I, objection, goofball. <laughs> Okay, Z's number one. I am curious if you I would like this game. I want to play this game real bad. Now I want to play Ostia too. Yeah, I well, want one's to play in the that, library. Ice is in the library. Ice is in it the is. library. Yeah. Oh, hello, hello. Yep. Okay, I, I know I thought of your game earlier, but I can't. Um, I'll tell you what. Oh, I, I think it's a popular number one. What else has been number one for people? Mostly Earth and right, and I, you already and Thunder Earth Road. On there. And you already had you already had Thunder this Road. This was already on like three people's lists, and it's been like number one twice. Oh, oh, duh! I remember now. Adventures, the, the oh. unmatched, unmatched for sure. You gave that a ten. Yeah, it's unmatched adventures. My number I... one is unmatched adventures. Right. Tales to Amaze, Legends of the West. <laughs> <laughs> um. I really like this cooperative version of Unmatched that they came out with. I think it's fantastic. It's enjoyable. It's quick playing, punchy, thematic. They pulled off an amazing thing above and beyond this game in this box, which I gave a 10 to. I love it. I think it's so, so fun and immersive and a, a great co-op. But above and beyond that... They pulled off something that I haven't seen anybody else pull off before, and that is take a line of games yeah. that's been going now for a few years and go, you know what, we're going to revitalize all of this stuff by now letting you play it all in a new way. Yep. It's now all cooperative. Go play. Mm -hmm. That's insane to yeah, me. Yeah, it's great. Who does that? You know what I mean? So that's really amazing. They could have just made a, an unmatched right. cooperative game. They it kind of behaves like Unmatched, yeah, right. you know, but it's clearly not compatible, and it's its own game. That would have been amazing, and that's what this is. But it can also go get, you know, Bruce Lee or Little Red Riding Hood or whatever, Beowulf, and bam, throw it into this. I think Beowulf's in it. I don't know. Yeah. I think so. Um, and it works. You can just play it. Yeah, it's like know? they could have had a paywall, and they didn't, because not only do all those old characters work with this, these characters and the one they're going to continue to come out with yes. work with the, the regular Unmatched system. Right, right, it's right. Very, this is a very, not only is it a great game, it's a very consumer-friendly design. Way to do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the characters that come included in this, the player characters that come mm -hmm. included in here are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Is there rules for regular Unmatched in the box? It is. For regular Unmatched in this box, no. It, are I you don't sure? Because so, I... there's no board to play on, I think. I think the unmatched rules are in the box. It might be. I'm not yeah. sure. Um, the point being, you can play with these characters in regular unmatched, co you know, competitively. Mm -hmm. You can take, you know, Nikola Tesla or Golden Bat or whatever, and play those characters against Daredevil. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. The characters in here are amazing. And someone says Dice Throne did this too, but Unmatched does it way better. It does, and it I like Dice Throne Adventures. This is better. Yeah. So my number one, yes. Unmatched Adventures, Tales, Tales to Amaze is uh, an incredible release. They knocked it way out of the park. My number one. Yeah. And Tom's number one is going to be... There was that one dungeon I crawl that I had a think book. too hard about this, honestly. Is it Earth? It's Earth. Oh, yeah. Okay, you haven't yes! had Earth on your list. Okay, gotcha. I, so for me... 2023 was definitely a year there's tons of games I loved and mm -hmm. had a great time with. I had a hard time picking a number one, honestly. Yeah. I and Earth was, I'm like, I played Earth the most. I had so much fun with it. And again, it's easy to forget about it because it was right. so big at the beginning of the year. It yes. was huge. But it was fan it's it's fantastic. I like games where I can just do what you combo, want. combo, 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 <laughs> combo, combo. No, I, I think more about the combos. I, yeah, I agree. I like Earth because I like to pick one of the actions mm -hmm. and see how much I can make that one action worth. And you know what? I don't care what you pick in your turn. Yeah. You pick it, I'm like, okay, I'll do a few things. I'll do a few things. And now we're picking this action. Yeah, Whoa. right, right, right. So Chris says, yeah, the regular unmatched rules are in the box because the co-op rulebook mostly says use the basic rules with these changes. Uh, okay, so I guess you mm -hmm. can play competitive right in there. There mm. you go. So anyway... Okay. Earth, just a fantastic game. And I was actually thinking as I was looking at that cover, like, I, I really want to go back to Iceland. Yeah. I want to go oh, find that spot. I know. Because I thought that was like a made-up cover.
But that's I, I found the pictures. That that's an actual spot in Iceland, which does not surprise me yeah, one no bit. Kidding. There's only one way to confirm that, and I think it would be a perfect ending to next year's top ten. Do it from Iceland? Let's say the three of us go to that spot right now and go to that spot and we take a picture there and maybe stay for two to three weeks then (laughs) we come back and do our thing at the end of next year we'll do our top uh, 10 games of 2024 and we'll call it full circle and we'll have a picture of us in that spot maybe holding up sign that says 2024 or something we're not done yet we got the people's choice Oh, All right, let's see what the oh people think. Oh my goodness me! I, I don't think I was ready for this. Here we go. All right, I think uh, yeah, I, I think. Okay, I I'll think tell you what's not going to be on there. Hostia. <laughs> it won't. Unfortunately, not enough people have played it. All right, well, let's see. I think we're going to show ten through six first. Or number 10. ten, hegemony. Hegemony. Wow. Yeah, I'm telling you, the people who love this love this game. It's, okay. it's, it's one big, of those games that I think will still be game. talked in 10 years. Really? Like, like an 18xx style game. Like you know, like Mocker, the people are talking about D-Mocker right. still today. Yeah. And by the way, people, come on. Yeah. Play some well, let's get games. over it. Yeah. They're talking about hegemony in 10 years. Well, that's because it's how long it takes to play a game, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's about nine and a half I years. chose number nine. <laughs> the last light. 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 Slightly shorter than hegemony. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly easier. Yeah, to teach you can too. you can basically have the heat death of the universe in less time than <laughs> hegemony. Play hegemony. To be yeah. fair, running the government will always take you longer. Anyway, that is true. Nine last line. Let's number eight. Number eight for shuffle. For shuffle. I need to Which play this game. Which you thought was my number uh, two there. Mm-hmm. For shuffle's great, Mike. I need to play. I it. put it on my big games and small boxes list okay. because it it fits that list to a. You could easily learn it. Oh but yeah, it is quickly. so like it's a little box, but there's so much game in there. Almost picked it up like, at Essen. It feels like Earth, like wow, Junior or something. Not really? Junior, but like yeah, the yeah small I know what you one. mean. Yeah. Okay. Seven is apiary. 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 That's two space the games. The bee death of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's pretty impressive. This made it on considering the game just came out like a month that ago. That is very true. All right, number six. Distilled. Distilled. I'm surprised that many people played this. I like no, it a it's, lot. I, it, it's, it's got out there. It has got out there, and it's yeah, it's getting played. All, All right, five. Nice. Sky Team. Okay, and that didn't make either of your top ten. Well, I it played it for the top. first time two weeks ago. Ah. It was not in my it, top ten. It would not 10, be in my no. top ten, but it's it's clever. It's good. I enjoy it. Number four, Ticket to Ride Legacy. Now, that one actually surprised me the most mm-hmm. because it, it literally came out beginning of November. <laughs> yeah. And people cannot have played it that much. Yeah, but right. But it's doing really well. It's getting a lot of buzz. Three, Thunder, Thunder Road. Road. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Not very surprising there. No. It's a very popular game. Number two, Expeditions. Expeditions. Wow. I like guess I games. was wrong about people. I thought the same thing, Ticket to Ride. Seems to be getting mixed, uh, you know, feelings and expeditions. I thought was getting mixed feelings too. I yeah. Guess not. Expeditions was in the mix for me. I, it kind of hurt not having it there, but. And there's number one, Earth. Earth. Wow. Okay. So okay. a three-way crossover, crossover with the, with the people. Well, four-way crossover for for all of us, but for the. It was on a lot top, of people's top list too. Number I, ones. I, yeah. You and the people. Earth the, is clearly of course, out of touch. I saw the voting, yeah. and Earth <laughs> is was a clear winner here. There was yeah. it was not close between first and second. Um, that's especially, again, and not to beat a dead horse here, but that's especially impressive since it came out in January, right? I mean, this this game has been out there a while, and it's yeah. still. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, anyway, there you go, folks. Okay, real quick. Um, we're about to end this video, but we're about to go to another video. So just get off this one, go to the next one. We're going to be showing you our blooper reel for the year, and then the Winter Spectacular shall be over. Um, but two... Did you like voting on the top that top? Well, Mike is leaving in a bit here to go back to Indiana, mm-hmm. but he's coming back in January to do the top 100 games of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, we would like to have a people's choice top 100 games of all time. Whoa. You can go vote on that now. Go to dicetower.com, uh, go down to the bottom of the homepage, and there's a spot you can click. You can register. You have to register with an email address. That's just to keep us from getting spammed. I don't use those email addresses for nothing. I don't even know how I can access them. <laughs> all right? So the only the webmaster can get a hold of that information. But you can vote there for 25 games. The order of your voting matters. You put your favorite game at number one. 
and we'll be doing that at the beginning of January. So we're going to log off here. We'll see you in just a second for the bloopers. But thanks for watching our best games of the year. I'm Tom Basil. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. Have fun playing Earth. Yeah.